Thanks for tuning in. Pastor John here. We're starting a new message series called Moving Forward. That's what the disciples need to do after the resurrection. Move forward in what Jesus had for them because they were stuck. And that's what the series is going to be all about. Today, it's they were stuck in fear and he wanted them to move forward. So if you have your Bible, look up Acts chapter 18, verses 1 to 11, uh, 1 John 1, 1 to 4, and John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. We'll go through that and watch how Jesus set them free from their fears, from being stuck to move forward in the mission that he had for them. So check it out. I know this message is for you. All right. Let's stand. Let's pray. Let's worship. Lord Jesus, we are here to worship and honor you. You have given us something to sing about, something to rejoice in. You have given us hope for the future and for today. You've given us something to talk about, which is your glory and who you are and all that you have done and the difference you make in each of our lives. We thank you that you give us purpose in life to make you known, that we have a reason for being, and it's for you and your kingdom glory. And we are here to celebrate, and to be empowered and set free to live that life that you have for us more and more. So bless us through your word today. Enliven our faith more and more. Holy Spirit, come and fill us with that power and that peace and that joy that comes from your presence within us. So Lord, receive the glory as we uh, give it all to you. In your name, Jesus. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today.
Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they are created, and he established them forever and ever. He issued a decree that will never pass away. Kings and the earth and all the nations, the princes. For his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. And he has raised up for his people on the Lord. The praise of all his faithful servants. The people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us use this time for silence, for reflection on God's word, and for self-examination. Amen. You know, in the book of Lamentations, it lets us know that God's mercy towards us is renewed every morning. So with that confidence in God's mercy towards us, let us confess our sins together. Holy and gracious God, I confess Give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love. By his mercy, he has brought us close to his heart, and we are redeemed by Jesus Christ. As a call servant, I can announce the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Father in heaven, through your death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroy death, and through the forgiveness of sins, you give us life and salvation. Grant that we may, without doubt, believe and find comfort in the salvation from sin, death, and the devil that you won for us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you. You may be seated as we sing our next hymn, Blessed Assurance.
Good morning. The first lesson today is from Acts 18, verses 1 through 11. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Achilla, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker, as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath, he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. But when they opposed Paul and became abusive, He shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent of it. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. Crispus, the synagogue leader and his entire household believed in the Lord. And many of the Corinthians who heard Paul believed and were baptized. One night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one is going to attack and harm you, because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. The epistle lesson is from 1 John 1. Verses 1 through 4. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you that what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. Here's a little secret. They already had the joy. But it's not complete until others have it. To everybody reading what they have sent out about the joy of the resurrection of the risen Christ and what that means in their life. He says, my joy, our joy isn't complete until everybody gets it and everyone receives it. So we rise for our hallelujah verse. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. 
Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Believing and with great faith, we speak these words in the Nicene Creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven it was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Children are excused. We sing our next hymn. That is what life is all about, trusting Jesus. 
Someone has said, you know, you know how to spell faith? It's called R-I-S-K. See, faith isn't real unless it's tested, unless you're actually trusting Jesus in a time where you can't rely on yourself no more. It's, I'm living in you and for you. I'm trusting you, Lord Jesus. That's the faith that's real. It's walked out, it's lived out, it's trusting in his power, his provision, his protection, his grace, his mercy, his leading, his guiding, the future that he has for us in the past that he has redeemed and the presence of his presence right now. So Lord Jesus, open our eyes in faith to trust, not just to see, but to trust, to rely, to lay upon, to let go, to dare to risk following you wherever you lead. To let go of control and to trust in you. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I have a trust issue this morning. Randall Brockett gave me this new lectern, and I can go anywhere I want. <laughs> I can preach here, and I can go over here, I can take it down the streets. So we'll see how it works out. All right, today we're starting a brand new message series called Moving Forward. And that's really going to be on the hearts and minds of most people tomorrow if they're out and about in our city during the big eclipse. They say that traffic is going to be horrendous. And when it's all said and done, most are going to be stuck for hours before they finally get where they want to be, moving forward. How can I move forward when all these cars are just sitting there? We got someone from Dallas. He already knows what that's like. This is often the way it is in life. Things can happen that cause us to get stuck where we are in life. And here are some things that can do that. It, it could be the death of a spouse. You're just stuck. Yeah. Maybe even the death of a parent. Everything just kind of stands still. You get into this fog. What is reality really all about? You feel like you're in the twilight zone somewhere. You just kind of get stuck. Yeah. It could be the loss of a job. Now what? I'm so used to doing the same thing, and now I don't know what I'm going to do or where to go. It could be an injury or an illness where we're suffering, and it just hangs on. I feel stuck. What am I going to do? I'm stuck in this pain. I'm stuck in this illness, even a catastrophic event that brings economic distress could do it. I just point that out because when I look how much our country's in debt, I'm thinking something will probably have to be adjusted sooner or later. It happened in the 1920s. You see, in a nation where we trust in our money, it wouldn't surprise me if God shook the tree to say that is not a God that can save you. So sometimes when things happen that we're out of our control, we feel stuck. And when these things happen, we all need help to get unstuck. We need help moving forward. And that's where the disciples were on that first Easter evening. I don't know if you noticed as I read that lesson today. They're stuck. They're stuck behind locked doors for fear of the Jews. They're really, really stuck. They're stuck with all their hopes and dreams of what life would be like. Now all dashed to pieces with the death of Jesus. 
They're stuck with how and where they had been living their life up to that point and now having no clue where they're going to go from here. It was easy before. We just followed Jesus. Whatever he says, wherever he goes, we're just with you. And all of a sudden, he's not there no more. We're stuck. We're really, really stuck. And to get unstuck, they needed help in a big way. And that's what they got when Jesus showed up. Powerful, powerful passage. Jesus came and stood among them. The doors are locked. He just appears in the room. And he says these four words, peace be with you. Then he showed them his hands and his side. This is the key. To get unstuck, we need to see and believe that Jesus is with us. And the loss of a spouse, the loss of a job, a serious health issue, the bank is empty and locked. The key to get unstuck is to see Jesus is with me right here, right now. I got peace, all is well. Did you know that's really what the word peace means? It's shalom. It is really a perfect peace. It is the blessing of everything made whole and is all good. And when Jesus speaks these words, it's just not like saying, well, hi, Anthony, peace. No, he is releasing peace as he speaks these words. Peace be with you. And as he says these words, he's releasing peace to their hearts. And here's how you know they received it. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were overjoyed. What is overjoy? Joy is, I'm smiling. Overjoy is I'm gushing. It is coming out of every pore of my body and I'm jumping up and down and it's moving me to laugh and to giggle. That's overjoy. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Fear is gone. You can't have overjoy and fear in the same person. They're hiding because they're so afraid. They're paralyzed in their fear of what's happened, where they're going to go. And now that fear is gone because Jesus is there. And again, Jesus says, peace be with you. He's releasing some more. And I I began to wonder, why would he say it a second time? Now, these are grown adults. They're not children where you got to keep talking. (laughs) I believe he says it a second time because of the trauma of what they went through was so great that he wanted to release his healing peace to them once again. Their hearts were really were shattered. When someone has gone through extreme trauma, it takes a little bit. So he releases more peace. Peace be with you. And then he gives them a purpose for moving forward for not staying in that locked room for the rest of their life. He says, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Why did the Father send Jesus for a mission to save? Why would Jesus send us for a mission to save? We got a purpose to get up and get out of the house, to not live stuck. And then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgive them, forgiven. Here's the deal. To help them moving forward, he gives them power and authority to act on his behalf. Not only am I sending you on a mission, just like my father sent me here to do this, I give you power and authority. Where do you think the power comes from? Holy Spirit. 
If you don't have Holy Spirit, it's like running a car on less than fumes. It don't go. With the power of the Holy Spirit, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. He lives inside. He releases and gives and breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. And then this whole thing about forgiving sins. If you forgive sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they are not forgiven. It's the authority to preach the good news. That in Jesus, you get all the forgiveness you need throughout your whole life. Without him, you don't get any forgiveness. It's the authority to preach the gospel. It's to tell people, you either have them or you don't. You either have forgiveness or you don't. You have authority to warn people to say, hey, way, the way you're living without Jesus, it's not going to end well. But you also have the authority to say, hey, there's an invitation from the one who died and rose. His name is Jesus. And his blood atones for all sin. And it's for you. See, Jesus is there to get the moving. Because to live stuck is the most deadly place to live. Because that's where the enemy wants to take us. To doubt, discouragement, and despair. Guess where they were? They were teetering on despair. But Jesus shows up. That's the key. It's his presence that gets me unstuck, that takes the fear away, that gets me moving with him. Here's the thing. Jesus doesn't want anyone to live stuck in this world, stuck in their sins, stuck without hope, stuck without peace, stuck without joy, stuck without life that really is life in him. doesn't want anybody to live that way. And that's why he does the same thing for Thomas a week later. Did you ever wonder why he came back for Thomas? He blew it. Thomas, where were you? Why weren't you with the others? Why were you just left and gone and did your own thing? You see, Thomas was really, really stuck. The disciples were stuck, stuck. He's really, really, really stuck. He says, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and reach out my hand and, and put it into his side, I'm not going to believe. See, a lot of people want to pick on Thomas because he's doubting Thomas. But I think he's the one that was maybe traumatized the most. You see, a lot of people don't realize what goes on in, in the hearts and lives of people. He's sounding big and bullish, but inside he's really, really afraid because he has been so hurt. Hurt people have to protect their heart from being hurt again. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They can't feel vulnerable to open up their heart because they're afraid it's going to happen. Again, he says, I can't. I can't do that. It was so painful the first time. I think he had trouble just hanging with the other disciples because it just reminded him of what he had been through. So Jesus comes and does exactly that for Thomas. He comes and stands among them even though the door is locked. He does it again. He says the same words, peace be with you. I release my peace to you. Then he turns to Thomas and says, put your finger here. Come on. See my hands. Take a look. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. If that's what it takes to know that I am here and that I am here for you, then just do it. But then, now stop, stop doubting and believe. I'm here. I'm here for you. Did you notice Thomas's response? 
He says, my Lord and my God. He didn't say, my Savior and my God, you rescued me. He said, Lord. Lord is a positional statement that you are in charge and I follow whatever you say. You know, that's why in Scripture you'll see Lord and Savior. He's really both. But until we submit, trust, surrender, he's just somebody. Thomas makes this powerful declaration, my Lord and my God. It's Jesus' reassuring presence that changes everything for the disciples. I just want you to notice that. He came back. He revealed himself to them. It changed everything for them. And later for Thomas. See, later on, John in his epistle, in his first epistle, he writes these words to that same effect. He says, seeing him, touching him, changed everything. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, we, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared after his resurrection. We have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. He's describing the effect of having seen and heard Jesus after his resurrection. That's where he starts writing his epistles. And then he makes that claim, which I already told you about. We write this to make our joy complete. We can't keep it in. We're still kind of in the overjoy, and it's bubbling out, and it's the first thing we want you to know. We have seen and touched. He's real. He's here. We can trust him, and we want you to have that as well. Then in Acts 18, we see how Paul experienced the same thing in Corinth. Isn't it amazing how all these truths in Scripture, they line up? You're going to find it everywhere. Jesus said the Scriptures cannot be broken, which means it's, it's one unending truth that all fits together in this marvelous, marvelous way. Paul was in danger of getting stuck. Why? Because he is facing opposition and abuse. Find that in your Apple Music Library. You can ask me to play your music. <laughs> or ask for your music on a different app. <laughs> People are listening. He was in danger of getting stuck. Let me ask with you, what happens to you when you face opposition for doing the right thing? and abuse. I'm just not going to do it anymore. I'm just going to go home. They had their chance. Wait a second. That church offended me. I'm not going to church ever again. Yeah. That is real. But to get unstuck, Jesus shows up. That night, one night, he says, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. That's how the Lord spoke to Paul the first time, in a vision. Wrecked his life. He even said that he's going to be my chosen missionary to the Gentiles, and this is when it's now beginning to take place. Paul says, I'm done, I'm going to the Gentiles. And now the Lord speaks to him in a vision, and he says, Do not be afraid. We're going to get into fear in a second. Don't be afraid of what's going to come. Don't be afraid of what's on the the horizon. Don't be afraid of what people say and think. Don't be afraid of how things will turn out. I, I got it all. And I'm right here. I'm here for you. Keep on speaking. Don't be silent for I am with you. No one is going to attack and harm you because I have many people in the city. And having this encounter with Jesus' presence, Paul was empowered to move forward in ministry. He stayed in Corinth for one and a half years teaching them the word of God. 
The letters to the Corinthians are huge for us today because it really shows how the church can get in such a mess and how to get out. Because the church in Corinth was a mess. They all did their own thing. They are all about themselves. These are powerful examples of how Jesus helped people move forward when they were stuck. And again, the key is he shows up. It's his presence that changes everything so we can move forward. See, like the disciples, we so often get stuck in fear. Fear paralyzes people. If you want to get paralyzed, give someone a dose of fear. Watch out for this. Watch out for that. Watch out. I'm not doing nothing. I'm just going to stay in my house. Uh (laughs) Fear is the enemy's biggest tool to stop his kingdom people from being kingdom people in the life that he's calling us as I have sent as the Father sent me, I am sending you. I give you authority. I receive the Holy Spirit. Forgive and retain. Let people know if so their joy can be complete. The answer to fear is really faith. Jesus may show up in a dream. In a vision. Anybody else have dreams of Jesus? Did you know he says he speaks to men in visions, old men in dreams, young men in visions, and this is how it's going to be? Because he's talking all the time. He's showing up all the time. He's letting us know he's near. It's focusing on Jesus and how he is with us at all times and in all circumstances. I got nothing to worry about. That's when we see all is well. And it's really when you hear him say, peace be with you. Peace. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. Now let's go. It's time to move forward. And he says, I'll lead the way. Come with me. So as I focus on Jesus and how he's with me, I can move forward in the mission with joy. You see, I I put that word in mission on purpose because it's not a side issue of life. It is our main purpose of life. To be salt and light, to be on mission. It's to become like Jesus. Jesus never took a vacation. He's living for the king. He's doing what he came to do. It's for his glory. It's all of life. We are all an important part of the body of Jesus in the world today. We all have a part to play. When parts aren't being played, the church, his body is crippled tremendously. So we can do it with joy because he is our joy and he is with us. And in him, we can rejoice always. I think we've heard that phrase, rejoice always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's not an option. Right? Unless you want to live outside the will of God, it's not an option. But you can't get there. You get stuck. Here's the classic stuck. Oh, me. What about me? Life is really, really bad. I'm trying to help somebody who's in that position. And all they can see is all the trouble can't see Jesus but when you see Jesus you can't really see all that trouble it's a non-issue I know who I am I know where I'm going I know whose I am I know I was bought with the price I know he loves me and says 
I'm everything to him, and he's prepared a place for me. My citizenship is really there. I don't look on stuff here. My eyes are fixed on things above, not on earthly things, for I died to this world. And I get him now, and I get him forever. I got happy feet going on. <laughs> Secondly, as I focus on how Jesus is with me, I can move forward with peace. He is the Prince of Peace. He releases peace, and peace is all is well. I know it, because he's got it. His arm is not too short to save. So where can I go that he's not there? Karen shared that as part of the scripture writing, going through Psalm 139. If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I go to the depths, you are there. He's everywhere for me. And finally, as I focus on how Jesus is with me, I can move forward in mission with confidence. Anybody know what confidence is? It's literally the word with faith. Con is with Fides is faith. I move forward with faith, with risk, with boldness, with courage, with power in my inner being. It all comes from Jesus because he's given me power and authority to represent him well. So, Lord Jesus, we do not want to live stuck, but we want to live moving forward more and more to all that you have for us while you give us time in this world, to lift you high so that people would be drawn to you, that people would be rescued from their stuckness in the pit of despair and the lostness of this world, that you came to seek and to save the lost, people who are stuck not knowing who they are and where where they need to go. You came to set free. It is for freedom that you came to set us free. So Lord, have your way. Help us to be resurrection people who see you, who hear you, who in a moment will touch you with our lips and live in that strength and confidence in you. In your precious name. Amen. Moving forward. You know, I was just sitting up there sharing with Pastor John. I was, he always say, he asked the Lord to speak to him in his dreams. So last night, you know, I was asking the Lord to speak to me in my dreams. And um, as Pastor was preaching, the Lord spoke to me last night in my dream. And what what I seen in my dream, I was like, I wanted to share this morning. And I was like, nope. I'm not going to do it, Lord. I just, you know, I'm just being honest. I'm like, you know, with all this stuff with solar eclipse, maybe, you know, maybe something to be said that whatever I dream, it'll come out and I don't have to say it. Well, pastor kept preaching. Then he started talking about dreams. I'm like, okay, Lord. So I hit my wife. I'm like, do I say it or do I not say it? So last night as I was dreaming, this is my dream, is that with the solar eclipse, he was showing me that people are going to start taking God serious, right? And they're going to come to Christ. But we as the body of Christ, and I've heard Pastor John say this, that we as the body of Christ, we have to be ready to receive people when they come. Because we live in a world that's a hopeless world. And in my dream, it was showing me how God, he speaks through the moon and the stars he's speaking to the world me and mr gary on friday i was i was telling mr gary i said isn't it amazing how god can get everybody attention everybody is talking about this solar eclipse you can't tell me that's not god he is speaking to his people some say oh he's coming back he's coming back Man, for the saints, that will be the best thing ever. But woe to those who are not ready. 
See, life is real. And things like this get our attention. You know, I have some family members that play church. And now they're starting to get more serious about this church thing. And I'm just so grateful that God loves us so much that he give us warnings. He give us dreams. He give us pastors to preach the truth. Amen? So let us stand. Let us pray. Let us move forward. And let us not be afraid because we know that God is in control. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. This sermon series, Moving Forward, Father. There's no place we can move, no place we can go without your power and your strength, Lord. So we just cry out to you to help us, Lord, in our Christian journey, Father, as we live a life as witness for you, Father, that the things we do and the things we say, Father, that it will be drawing people to you. Father, we just thank you for those that, that are in this Christian race, Father. We pray that they don't grow weary, Father, and they well doing. We pray, Father, for those that know not you and the pardon of their sins, Father. For you say you came that all may be saved. So we pray for that sinner man, Father, that know not you and the pardon of their sin, Father. They may feel that they're not worthy. But, Father, because of your blood, we all are worthy. And we all are the same at the foot of the cross. So, Father, touch those, Father, that know not you and the pardon of their sins. Now, Father, we pray for those that are sick, those that are hurting, those that need your healing touch, those that are that just crying out to you. Give them your peace, Father. Give them your joy. Comfort them right where they're at. We pray for this world that we live in as people are looking up at the solar eclipse at your glory, Father. That they see you, Father. And they want to change their life to be with you forever in heaven. To take life serious to take your kingdom serious, that our living may not be in vain, Father. Now, Father, we cry with that prayer that you have taught us to pray. And that prayer is, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that this message blessed you, that uh, you see how fear can get us stuck. And there you're ready to to live free, to move forward and all that Jesus has for you in his mission, his calling on your life, the things he has for you to do. If we can be a blessing to you on this journey, give us a call. Our number is 501-525-0322. Or join us live on Facebook Sunday morning uh, or anytime, really. On Sunday morning, we're live at uh, 8.30 and 11 o'clock Central Time. And our Facebook page is First Lutheran Church Hot Springs AR. We also do Bible studies and uh, special services. So you can just check in once in a while and all that's going on. So God bless you on your journey. Look forward to seeing you next time.